after miscarriages are women can't even get those that I don't no. know. No, it's less than 1.7 percent. No, you're a moron. Uh, you because don't know the statistics. miscarriages are extremely common, and most women opt to have miscarriages and abortion are different. What is what is abortion? No, a miscarriage Ab is a medical. No, yes, no, it's not. Okay, let me let me educate you. Okay. Yes, it. Well, is. hold on. Get back. Hey, get back. Hey, hey. Hey, get that's back. not okay. Don't put your hand. Hey, get back. Stop. Stop. Don't put your hands on her. Please, I don't want to scare your daughter. Please get away. Welcome to the Father's Day. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you all so much for being with me. You can uh, support us by going to thefatherstate.tv, and I appreciate that. Also on locals.com. And thank you all by cl clicking the link in the description to go to local. Thank you all so much. Interesting guest today, Eliezer. Wow. Eliezer Perez. He is a Christian entrepreneur and YouTuber based out of Portland, Oregon. Eliezer, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised I can just say it. Yeah. Because I just say it over and over and over again. It's in the Bible. It just means God help me. Oh, really? Yeah. And so I read that you are a Christian entrepreneur. Christian and then maybe entrepreneur as well. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And what type of entrepreneur are you? Uh, I, I come from the sales world. So doing sales, like B2B sales, um, selling like coaching courses, oh. um, marketing services. That's right. where I started. But now I'm really looking into doing something more purposeful, which is doing YouTube to defend the Christian faith, to fight these people with the political views that people have that you've seen, and uh, just kind of expand on that. And But you, your business is not called Christian business. No, no, no. I mean, Christian entrepreneur. It would be separate, yeah. Oh, I got yeah. you. Like the entrepreneurship would be what I, I'm passionate about, and then to bring money in. But the Christian stuff, the YouTube stuff, that's like the, just the purpose, the mission. Right on. Yeah. And, and you say you want to defend the Christian faith? Yeah. And what does that mean? Uh, so first off, what is the Antichrist, right? There's the Antichrist. It's the people that try to distort Christ's message. Um, so Christ says, love your neighbors, love your enemy. He says to uh, prioritize family, to uh, you know, follow certain commandments. And then the people nowadays, when you see these kids that are chopping off their body parts, when you see the LGBTQ agenda that's being... Uh, propagated out through through right. the media, through Twitter, um, normalizing porn, normalizing these things. That's right. all going against Christ's message. So my mission now is to defend the Christian faith, to de to show how their worldview is based on a faulty premise, right. and show them that it's going to lead to nothing but de degeneracy long term. And then how without Christ, there's really no purpose to life. Amazing. And so amazing. And by <laughs> <laughs> and by doing that, you are defending the faith. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, okay. And do you love all people? Um, yeah, I guess I guess God calls us to love all people. And do you love all people? Uh, what, do, what do you mean by love? So you say something about God, defending the faith is about God's love or something you just said. Yeah, like what God commands us to? to yeah. Uh, right, to love, to love, right? And so right, do right. you love all people? I love all people in the sense that we're all made in God's image, but um, I don't tolerate all people. Oh, you know. In terms of in terms of what they believe, what they're exercising, um, yeah, I, w I wouldn't love what they do in that sense. But you love all people. Yeah, yeah. God commands us to, right? No, but do you? <laughs> God <laughs> commands us to, but do you love all people? Uh, I would say, I would say yes. Do yes. you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How can we see you unsure about it? I guess because uh, I would need more clarification of what you mean by love. Like, you know, there's times where you, there's a criminal or someone wants to maybe shoot you or attack you or kill you. Um, the, the part that we should follow is to love your neighbor and love your enemy. Right. But we're all sinners. And so at that point, will I have love in my heart or will I have hate? I don't know. Oh, but for now, do you love all people? Right now in this setting, yes. Not a <laughs> <laughs> you made me excited. So, yeah, I love all people right now. You know? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, okay. Interesting. I'll come back to okay. that. Okay. Um, do you believe that human beings are in a fallen state? Yes. And what does that mean to be in a fallen state? That God, when he created this world, it was intended to be perfect. Uh, when Adam and Eve sinned, it brought sin into the world. So now we're sinners. We have um, corrupt genes, you could say. Um, so now we're, 
you know, trying to, we're deviating from what God commanded us to do. Right. And we're, we're just sinners in that way. Oh, I got you. And so are you, you're a Christian, right? Yes, sir. And are you a sinner? Yes. Yeah. You're a sinner? Yeah. Even as a Christian, you're a sinner? Yeah, yeah. And I think the difference between uh, a sinner now and a sinner before Christ was now when I sin, my, my conscience is much different. I, I feel guilty of the sin. I repent of my sin. I don't want to sin again. Um, but I think it's just within our nature to just, you know, want to improve and want to be Christ-like. Right. But it's ultimately hard to actually achieve perfection through that. So are you saying that it's, a, it's hard to, to be a Christian and not sin? Yeah, absolutely. Really? And, and why is that? Um, because in the, in the world that we live in today, especially, right, where porn is, is, is pushed, um, where partying, drinking, it's all normal, yeah. um, even abortions, right, getting abortions, it's something that is socially acceptable and even morally good now. Right. It's hard not to, not to be a sinner when you're a bunch of degeneracy and a bunch of corrupt people and corrupt souls, um, especially when it's been normalized through your schools, through your education system, through your politics, through your Twitter. It's very hard to, to refrain from that. And I think the reason that, uh, why we are sinners is because God wants us to depend on Him, to come back to Him. Because if we were all perfect, if we didn't sin, we wouldn't right. even need God. We would uh -huh. just be able to depend on ourselves. Are you a street preacher? Uh, not really. No, I would say more street debater. A street debater, yeah, not yeah. street preacher. Right, right. And so does God see you as a sinner or does God see you as a sinner? Yes. So does God see you as a sinner or s saved? Um, that's a good question. I wish I could read his mind, but I, I would say, uh, I would say, so, you know, Romans 10, 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall right. believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Right. So I, I put my full trust and faith in Jesus um, and, I, and I do believe in him and I have that genuine conviction. Right. Uh, but with that said, uh, no one will ever be perfect. So even just one sin that says the wages of sin is death. So right. even just committing one sin is making you a sinner. Even just bragging about something, lying about one thing, that's already a sinner in, in God's image. Amazing. So which is easy for you to believe that you are a sinner or all your sins have been forgiven? Which one is easier to believe? For you. Um, that all our sins have been accounted for. Which is easy for you to believe that you are a sinner or all your sins have been forgiven? That all of my sins have been forgiven is easier to believe. And then why do you call yourself a sinner then? Uh, because <laughs> you're asking some good questions. Um, so Jesus, there was a shedding of blood that happened at one point. Right. right. If Jesus never died for us on the cross and there was no shedding of blood, um, we, we, once again, the wages of sin is death. So we all deserve death, immediate death, right off the bat. We all deserve that. Correct? Would you agree or? No. No. Why not? I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. So the wages of sin is death, meaning that we're all corrupt. Uh, so there had to be a shedding of blood for you and me to live right now. We need blood. As soon as if we just start losing blood real fast, we'll die. Right. right? So we need blood. So Jesus sacrificed His blood for us, um, and so what that means is that He paid for the debt. He He paid for our sins for the entirety of existence. However, that doesn't mean that we're going to be away from sin now. The the reason the Bible exists to begin with too is for us to reason with God, but also to give us a, a guidebook as to how to live life. Meaning that we're going to experience these difficulties. Right. And if we weren't going to experience them, then the Bible would just say you're going to go through life very easily. You're not going to face depression or anxiety or, or drugs or sex or adultery. You're just going to live an easy life. But it, it kind of gives us a guideback as to how to deal with those things. So in the Bible, does it say that God's way is easy? His burdens are light? Uh, I don't know. Does it? Yeah. Okay. So what does that mean from your, from your view? Why do you have to go through life? Sinning. You know, having a difficult time when God said those who follow him, believe in him or follow him, their, their life is easy. If you take on his ways, it's easy. Your life is easy and your burdens are light. Hmm. I, I would say that depends, yeah, on like um, your understanding of it. Um, from my view, because... Do you believe God when he says that? Yeah, but I guess I would under, like want to get more clarification as to what exactly... You want him to tell you what that means? No, I would say someone that uh, interprets scripture a certain way. Maybe, you know, a lot of times there's parables. A lot of times there's um, deeper meanings behind things or certain things align with a different verse in a different right. chapter. And so what's difficult about understanding that those who follow him, he said, those who take on my ways, their, their life is easy and my burdens are light. So follow me. What's, what's difficult about that? 
to um, understand. Yeah, I, gu- I guess like understanding what, what easy would mean. Like easy as in like life is not hard, as in you won't deal with hardships. Is that what it would mean? Right. Okay. I guess that's just hard for me to, and maybe I just have to learn more, or I do have to learn more about that. Um, but it'd be a little bit difficult because I, you know, what we observe in nature, right? How do we understand truth? It's what's in correspondence with reality. And so when we look at reality, there's people that are depressed, suicidal. Um, there's people that are on drugs to cope with certain things. People dealing with, with porn issues and, and cheating. You know, so when we look at those things, life is hard in that sense. Uh, but when we, I think in a sense, I do understand though what it means because when you do come to Christ, your mm-hmm. life is easy in the sense that he has relieved you. You know, right. he says, come to all, me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens and I'll give you rest. So is your life easy or difficult? Uh, I would say both. You have, it's hard and easy? I would say it's like, I know on your show once you said um, that the Bible says you can find perfect peace with him, right? Do you believe that? Yeah, I believe that. And do you have perfect peace? When I'm, when my energy is consumed in Him. So do you have perfect peace? When my focus is all on, on God, yes. So do you have perfect peace? <laughs> like throughout the day, just so on a daily you, basis. Do you have perfect peace? <laughs> <laughs> what the? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Beta. <laughs> <laughs> don't be a beta. <laughs> um, I don't have perfect peace throughout the day. Why don't you have perfect peace if you believe in God? Because when I don't have the perfect peace, it means I'm deviating away from God. And, what and why do you do that? Because we're all sinners, Jesse. Mr. No, but Peterson. why do you deviate from God? Uh, you know, because uh, we deal with hardships. I deal with hardships. Um, maybe, um, maybe you know, you get something, you get attacked. Maybe someone's making a lie about you on social media for me. Um, maybe someone's starting some rumors. Uh, maybe someone's threatening you about something. So you feel that you, your focus isn't on God at that moment. It's right. on that one thing. Right. And so, which is easy for you to believe that you are a sinner or all your sins have been forgiven? That all my sins have been forgiven. So then why do you call yourself a sinner? Because we're all sinners. But he said you're not. They have been forgiven. Right. But, but when, when if, it says... If he forgive you for the debt, why, you think God see you as a sinner? Yes. But then he said, all your sins have been forgiven. Why would he see you as a sinner? Right. Well, but when it says your, your sins have been forgiven, it doesn't mean your inability to sin has been removed. And why is that? He said that anyone that says that they believe in him and they are sinning, they are a liar. The truth is not in him, in that person. So then what did that mean that we're all perfect? If that were tr- completely true? Because you, you made it in his image, and he is perfect. But then, but your show is called The Fallen State because right. we're in a fallen world, right? Right. So then how would those coincide? I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Good question. Uh, don't let me end the show without responding. Okay. Because um, I'm trying to understand is like, I know the sins have been forgiven, right. but I, I don't think that means that our inability to sin is now a thing. We're still like, we're still going to be sinners. But the wages of sin is death, meaning that there was a shedding of blood to remove the, the death part of it. Right. So, like, for example, if you made one lie right now and Jesus didn't die for, for your sins, you would be worthy of, of uh, the death penalty, for example. Right. If Jesus didn't shed his blood for you. Really? But so that's, what the, wages, that's what the wages of sin would mean. <laughs> Let me ask. Um, so even though Christ said and God said, too, that all your sins have been forgiven, you don't believe that. No, I do believe that the sins have been forgiven. Then why do you... Well, I don't want to go back. To wait, wait, so you're saying you don't sin anymore? We'll get to that too. Okay. But I'm trying to understand why you call yourself a sinner when that's not what... Oh, that's, not, that's not what God called you. Why are you calling yourself that? A sinner? Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish I could remember a specific Bible verse to, I guess, substantiate this, but... Do you have anger? No. You don't have anger? I, I deal with, like, I'll have angry moments, but I don't have anger. And so do you have anger? Um, no. You don't have anger? Mm, sometimes. <laughs> and so do you have Actually, anger? Actually, I do have anger. Yeah, yeah. Right. So how is it possible that a son of God served the devil and God? Well, because in Colossians... Um, or I forget if it's Corinthians, uh, it says that one who, uh, one will, will hate many things, right? One will have hate in his heart. Um, will that mean towards specific people or towards specific actions? Like, for example, I hate all the, 
agendas that are pushed now about racism. I hate the, the agendas that are pushed within telling kids that they can do whatever makes them happy. I hate, those things make me angry. Right, and why do they make you angry? Because it's a deviation from Christ's message. And what does it have to do with you? That um, it says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy but Spirit. But how are you gonna do that if you hate them? No, because I don't hate if the individuals. If you hate the sin, how are you gonna help them if you have hatred? Because I hate the sin, not the people. So do you believe it's possible to be of God and have hatred? Yes. You do? Yeah. Is hatred of God? No, it's, it's not from God, but hating, like it, hating your sin is... Is hatred of the devil? I guess it would depend on the context. Why, why don't you overcome all your anger? Why, why don't you just let it go and have no anger? So you're saying, um, like, I, not even have anger towards the things that are wrong. Right. Why don't you let anger go and be free of anger since anger is evil? Um, you know it's evil, right? Anger? Mm -hmm. So, like you would say, me hating uh, rape or having anger towards rape, that's, that's of the devil? Right. You're no better than the person you have the anger toward because anyone that has anger is a murderer. But, and, you, and God said that that anger person is a murderer and cannot be trusted. Uh, because anyone that has anger is of their father and the devil. But I wouldn't have hate towards the person. I'd have it towards the, the action. You wouldn't be able to separate. How are you going to separate the two? Because we're all sinners, but, but we're also <laughs> made in God's image. Amazing. Like, amazing. Let me ask. So do you have anger? Uh, at times. So do you have it? Like, on a, am I an angry person? No. So you don't have anger inside of you? No. When you get angry at time, where's that coming from? Um, sometimes not uh, not getting in my way or sometimes um, seeing something evil occur. But isn't it coming from inside of you? Mm -hmm. So if, it, if it's inside of you, that means that you have it. <laughs> Does that mean that you have it if it's inside of you? Um... Yeah, I mean, I guess we could we could use the same metric because by the same way, like when you commit one sin, you're a sinner. So then for me, I'm angry once, I'm, I'm angry. So you're a sinner and then I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? No. So you, you haven't committed one sin. Uh, I'm going to continue to meet with that. <laughs> I think you're right. trying. I'm I trying think to you know where something. I'm going. Okay, okay, um, I got you. Uh, anger, anger, anger. Somebody wanted, oh, who are you? I'm Eliezer Perez. And so who are you? That's your name. Yeah, I'm the one and only Mr. Never Lonely. That's your name. That's what you do. What you, who are you? I'm a follower of uh, Jesus, spreading the truth. That's what you do, but who are you? Follower, uh, follower of Jesus. You tell me what you do, but you're not telling me who you are. What do you, what do you mean by that? Who are you? In what sense? Period. <laughs> Period or question mark? <laughs> um, I would say I'm a political street debater. That's what you do. So who am I? Right. Uh, I'm a, I would say I'm a fighter. That's what you do. So then uh, help me out, Mr. Peterson. How do, how do I get around this? Uh, around like what? what? Like, I don't understand what you're asking me. I'm asking you, who are you? But that can mean so many different things because I... Because... For example, like if I ask you, who are you? And you say you're a teacher, that's what you do, but that's usually people's identity. I would never say I'm a teacher. Not you specifically, but someone, a lot of times they'll say. But no, no, what I'm telling you, I would never say that's who I am. If you ask me who I am, I'm uh -huh. not gonna say I'm a teacher. What would you say? Because that's what I do, that's not who I am. So who are you? After you tell me who you are, then I, I just don't know what you mean, so I'm trying to get an understanding. Oh, you know, have you ever wondered, who am I? Well, yeah, but then that's where I come back to like a follower of Jesus. But, but that's what you do. It still doesn't answer the question as to who are you. But wouldn't that be who I am? Because if you chop wood, right, every day, would that make you a wood chopper? Um, well, in some, in some ways, yes. No, that'd be what you do. But, but, but it's if... It's just a title that defines what you do, but it doesn't, it doesn't say who you are. Well, when, when people follow a specific mission or they reach a certain level of status, typically that thing that they use to reach a level of status is, becomes their identity. So like if I ask you, who are you? You're and you right say, about that. You say I'm a successful businessman. That's what you do, but that's who you are. But it's become their identity, but 
it's a false identity because that's not who they are is what they do. So you would say me being a follower of Jesus would be a false identity? N no. So, it's, so then it's, it's, a, it's a good identity. I'm asking you, who are you? Is, follower of Jesus is not your identity. I would say it is because that when I think of what else could I be above that, there's nothing else that comes to mind. Really? There's nothing else of higher importance or value. Do you believe that it's possible to live a life free of anger, never having anger, no matter what? Yes. And so why don't you live that way then? I'm still working towards that. By doing what? Uh, by, by learning more about scripture, uh, by learning more about the historical evidence of Jesus and, and the Bible, um, the church, by surrounding myself with better people that are stronger in the faith than I am. Right. Um, even if you look at some of my videos, you know, or even just in my life, you know, I deal with, with sometimes with reacting the wrong way, saying things that aren't really aligned with a good character. Right. So <laughs> I think once I, once I indwell myself, you know, I let the Holy Spirit really indwell in me fully, then um, I won't really deal with that anger. But none of those things you just named will help you overcome anger. It's not going to cause you to overcome anger. So what would it, would it be like the mother? You got to go and forgive. And have you heard me say forgive your mother? Mm -hmm. And have you done that? I think I have, but maybe. You think you have? But it, well, because now you're making me think, you know, if I have this anger, maybe, maybe I haven't forgiven fully. So have you forgiven your mother? Um, and that. Mm, maybe not. So have you forgiven your mother? Uh, I would say uh, I feel like I have, but I don't think I have. And so have you forgiven your mother? I think I have forgiven. And then sometimes she'll do things that will then cause me to kind of distance myself again. And then I have to forgive again. Did you tell her you have you forgive her for what she's done to you? Uh, no, I haven't told her that. Then why do you think you have forgiven if you haven't gone to her and forgiven her? Because of the internal feelings that I feel. What's that? Meaning that before I would deal with resentment or having a little bit of anger torture within my heart, and then I got rid of that afterwards. But you haven't gotten rid of it until you go and forgive her. So profess it for That's my That's why even when you're around her, she still get on your nerve. You don't like her. Mm. Because you have not forgiven her. God said, before you can enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must go and forgive you got to forgive your mother for recreating you in her image. You have her mindset. You have her emotions. Mm -hmm. You become just like her because she turned you away from your father mm -hmm. and in return turning you away from God mm -hmm. because she hates your father. <laughs> you're a master psychologist, Mr. Peterson. What do you mean? You're, you're good because you describe my life perfectly right now. Yeah. So I might need to hire you for some sort of psychology thing later on. <laughs> Maybe my therapist. But you got to... You, that's the only way you're going to know God. Yeah. You so gotta, you, do you think people, because um, I guess for me to get more clarification, do you think people, when they have the anger, it just comes from their mother and typically it's the same dynamic, the same um, Every human paradigm. being. Yeah. Anyone that's born through the woman must be born again, meaning that they must forgive and return to the Father and, and be born of the spirit of the Father. And that's because the mom indoctrinates them with these feminine values and, and the feminist she's, ideology. And the mother is evil. <laughs> Satan is the God of the woman. And the God above is the God of the man. Even so, women don't have love. They only have hate. Until they forgive and return to God. So would you say women aren't made in the image of God? No, they're made in the image of man. But, but in Genesis, it says that God made woman, man and woman in his likeness. Right. They have God's spirit, but it's been over, overruled by Satan. And that's why the woman must go and forgive because her nature is wicked. And it's not her. But it's the nature of Satan because the Satan is the woman's God. So they must go and forgive their mothers who pass it on to them and so on and so on. So I want to make sure I understand they are made in God's image, but they've been deceived by Satan. Yeah. Satan so, is their God. So wouldn't that kind of affirm what I was saying earlier where I'm made in God's image, but I'm still a sinner because Satan still tempts us to fall into certain traps? Well, you're only a sinner of the heart because you have not forgiven. Salvation is of the heart and your heart has not changed, it's still wicked because you have your mother's nature and it's not going to change until you go and forgive your mother because the anger that you have toward her is playing God, judgment. And as long as you play God, you will never know God. So when you go and face her, mother, I've been resenting you because of what you've done to me, impose your will, whatever you've done. And I realize now you couldn't help it. 
just as you can't help yourself, she couldn't help herself. Mm-hmm. And once you understand that, you go and forgive her, then God will forgive you and forgive your, mo- your father for not protecting you from her. And God will forgive you and make you free. But wouldn't you say if our sins have been forgiven, uh, the woman w- wouldn't be able to fall into Satan's temptation? So we know? If we're made in God's image and we're no longer sinners from right. your view because God uh, forgave our sins. Right. Wouldn't that mean that women can't be deceived by Satan? That the woman cannot be? Yeah. If she returned to God, she cannot be. But until she returned to God, she's already deceived. Right. So that would kind of affirm once again what I was saying, which is like the deviation from Christ is where our sin comes from. And so when we deviate from, for example, when I deviate from God's word, from scripture. Oh, I see what you're saying. What you don't know yet, and we probably don't have time to get into it now, uh-huh. that the real you have never sinned. How is that? What, what, what is the real me? Like the spirit, the soul? The, re- you- the real you is a person that you don't know. Everything you think uh, is you is not you. So if we don't know, then how do you know? You have to return to the kingdom and he will show you. Have you he will get rid of the false self. And then, and then he will, you, when the false self disappear, uh-huh. your loneliness, your depression, your suicide of thoughts, you believe that you're your body, your emotions and all that. When all that disappear because those are false self, then the real you will appear. Uh, but until that, until you stop identifying with the false self, you would never know who you are. So Jesse, I think I'm changing your mind right now. What do you mean? Because I, I, earlier you said, uh, like I said once again, the wages of sin is death, meaning right. that one sin is worthy of punishment. So that would mean that we're all sinners, including yourself. What do you mean? That, that we all, when we deviate from God, because all evil is, is a deviation from God. Right, but that happened when you were a child. No, because even now you still sin and I still sin. What do you mean? I don't have an angry heart. I have no anger. Ever? Never. Okay, what about, what about lying? Ever lie? I have no anger. What about lying? I have no anger. Fornication? No anger. But anger isn't the only sin that you can or can't commit. Yes, it is. Ang- so anger is the only sin? Because anger is of the nature of uh, the devil. What about lying? And that's why God said you need a brand new heart. What about lying? What, do you, what about lying? Or, or sleeping uh, out of, in, without being married. What do you mean by what about lying? Let's deal with lying. Yeah, like, what do you say lying is of Satan? No. Is it, so it's of God. Is, isn't there a time to lie? Um, well, I, I don't think, I mean, one of the commandments is, um, is to, there, not, to not bear a false witness. Is there a time to lie? I would say no. Really? Yeah. Why would you say that? Well, I guess, I mean, because once again, the commandment is don't bear a false witness, meaning don't, well, don't give false information. Why would you say that there isn't a time to lie? Because there isn't. So, if, if, I'll, so, I'll put it this way. If Jesus says that, that you should not, uh, I guess, denun- denounce your faith, even at the risk of being killed, right, being a martyr, if, if you should be willing to die for your faith, then what I don't... What faith? But let's go back to the lying thing. Because well, that's what I'm time. saying is like... Why isn't there a time to lie? Because, once again, it goes away from the commandments. It's a deviation from the commandments from God. Really? So if you land up in your home asleep and, and a criminal will break in and you hide your children under the bed uh-huh. and the criminal don't know where they are or they chase your wife into the house and she went and hid under the bed. When the criminal walk in, are you going to tell them where your wife is hiding? Well, you can just, you don't have to lie there. You can just say, I, I exercised I, my Fifth Amendment right and remain silent. <laughs> are you going to you you tell them where the criminal, are you going to tell the criminal where your wife is hiding? No, I would just, I just wouldn't answer. Amazing. So that's not lying. That's concealing, but that's not lying. No, you would answer. No, I wouldn't. Yes, you would. No, I would, mm-hmm. I would take the bullet. <laughs> Amazing. Jesse, are you I, married? No. Okay. Yeah. You How have long? kids? Yes. You do? Yeah. You have kids? Yeah. You look too young. How many? Just a few, maybe. Really? Yeah. I don't say the exact. I never show. Uh, show. Yeah, me either. Yeah, yeah. I never show my kids. That's well, good. I have a son okay. and two grandkids and then three great-grandkids. Okay. Well, but I never put them in the public. 
So I don't blame you. You didn't want to remarry? No. Uh, my grandma's got some cute friends. No. Why not? <laughs> they need a sugar daddy. I don't need that. I'm happy. You're happy? Yeah. But life isn't let about me, happiness. Let me do this because of time. Okay. Um, so you're not a street preacher, right? Correct. All right. Um, what made you, I saw a video where you were attacked. Uh -huh. One I saw where you were saying a sign about abortion uh -huh. stuff. Um, what did you? When you're doing this abortion sign thing, right? Tell us about that. Yeah, I was the, the one where I got attacked. That's the one you're asking, or just in general? Let's do the abortion one first. Not, not the one where that one lady attacked okay. you, but the one where you were walking up and down the street, and they were having an abortion rally, anti-abortion. Oh, that one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one was actually just recent. Um, oh, it was? Yeah, that was the last video I uploaded. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was, uh, they had a women's march. And so these women, like, I would agree with you where you say they're, they're deceived by Satan. Right. Um, so they were yelling out, no uterus, no choice. Uh, they were right at, at the big bridge of Portland. So it's pretty dangerous. So I just parked my car. We took the sign up and we confronted them. And they were talking about uh, feminists or, right. or the, the, the example that we need to follow. We don't need a man. Um, so I just confronted them head on. And uh, they got a little bit angry. They wouldn't have a discussion. And they don't even realize, Jesse, here's the funny part. They're supporting Palestine, and they're supporting these things, the kids dying in Palestine. Right. But, and they have signs showing that. Uh, but they don't realize that the, the Planned Parenthood, the organization that they support, that it was uh, founded by Margaret Sanger, the racist right. thing, Genesis, right? Yeah. And it's funny because they talk about uh, BLM and Black Lives Matter, but abortions are the number one killer of black babies. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense to me. And so... And then I saw the other side where you were attacked by this woman. Mm -hmm. She was a child walking down the street somewhere, and you had this abortion sign. And she came up and threw stuff on you, and yeah. you, she was trying to attack you, but you held her down and threw her on the ground and, and stopped her, the, her. The Rodney King beatdown. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was, <laughs> as soon as the, the camera shut off, oh, yeah. Gave her a one-two Mayweather. It was uh, crazy. What were you thinking going through that when that was happening, actually happened? Were you surprised she attacked you like that? Yeah, she, and the only reason she attacked me was because I was making her look stupid. Yeah. She was debating, she was trying to debate me, right. giving false information. And I get really upset when they're giving me false information. Like they're uh, deceiving, they're lying on purpose. All right. So when I corrected her and I was very condescending with her as well, she didn't like that. So she threw the shake on me. And then you could see in the video, she tried to claw my face as well. Um, she, she was grabbing my, she almost broke my fingers. She had them like twisted up with her, with her whole hand. Um, so then I, once I noticed that her, her strength kept increasing. I just grabbed her arm. I grabbed her by the neck and I quickly uh, brought her to the ground just to avoid any other issues with her daughter or right. whoever. Right. I heard you say that. Because yeah, when I saw her daughter cry or I heard her cry, it reminded me of the, the trauma that I went through as a kid when I would notice domestic violence around me. Right. So I did feel like, I felt like I was living through that again. Right on. Yeah. Amazing. Um, what is, do you think you're going to end abortion? What's your purpose oh, of yeah. doing all that? No, I think I'll end abortion. And why do you think you will end abortion? Because many great things started with one man. Oh. So, you know, how, how big of an impact did Martin Luther King have? You know, back in the day, they had Martin Luther King. They had Malcolm X. Now we have Jesse Lee Peterson. But you Martin know? Luther King was a big mistake. And, and probably other than uh, abortion, uh -huh. um, the civil rights movement was the worst thing that ever happened to the blacks. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I agree. What's wrong with the blacks? Uh, apart from the pigmentation, um, <laughs> <laughs> just just the false ideologies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think they're deceived by... When we talk about blacks, um, apart from... I don't think people really care about their, the color of skin. You know, I don't care about your color. You don't care about right. my color. But yeah. we care about the culture. And so when, what we see in the black culture is uh, it's just deceived by Satan that you don't need a man. You know, when they introduced the welfare system, I think the, the marriage rates or kids, uh, black kids being born in a, in a single household was like 30% in 1930. And then 1970s, it was over 70%. Yeah. And so now we see all these criminals. We see them, the, the rap music that they listen to, the movies that they watch. And do you tell them this? Uh, I mean, I would love to more often, but. Do you talk to blacks? Uh, there's not really many blacks around me usually. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. But if you were around them, will you be comfortable telling them that type of truth? If it was the right setting, yeah. If it was the right setting, like, I like, like yeah. I'm not going to just find a black person and just go, hey, you know, <laughs> right. you're black. And so you, you believe that you're going to end abortion? Yeah. And how, why do you believe you're going to end it? Because it starts with one man, and we just create dominoes, Jesse. Right. You know. But for years, men and women have come along to try to end abortion. And it has not ended. It's only gotten worse. But they weren't me. And what's different about you? What's different about me is that I'm committed to this. 
that I'm ready to die for what, what is right. You ready to die to end abortion? I'm ready to die fighting the Antichrist. Abortion is one subsector of that. There's more, more factors, but that's one of them. So do you believe that if God wanted to end abortion, he would have done it already? He could intervene, he, intercession, right? He could intervene. Do you believe that if he wanted to end abortion, he would have done it already? Yeah, in the same way that if he wanted rape to end, he would end that. So do you believe that if God wanted to end abortion, he would have done it already? Well, that would, that would take a, our ability away to have free will. Do you believe that if God wanted to end abortion, he would have done it already? No, he wouldn't do it. God would not do it? He would not do it. So if God would not do it, why do you want to, why are you trying to do it? Because he gave us free will for a reason. And God gave you free will? Yeah. And why do you believe that God gave you free will? Because I, I chose to, for example, I chose to come here and I'm going to choose to go somewhere after this. I'm choosing to fight for abortion. So I'm, I'm, I'm actively, there's, there's determinism and there's free will. Free will <laughs> is you get to decide. Determinism is, is like a, if you open a can of Coke and right. it fizzes, it's just reacting. It's just chemicals reacting. It and doesn't have any say. And so you believe you have a free will. Yeah. And so you believe as a result of having this free will, your free will is what's causing you to try to end abortion? Yes. Really? Uh -huh. But how about the people that want to kill the children in the womb? Don't they have a free will? And can't they do what they want with their free will? No, they can do what they want, but my free will is going to supersede their free will. But why would you impose on their free will? Would you want someone to impose on yours? Well, everyone does that because we all have presuppositions. Would you want someone to impose on your free will? No, but they do it anyways. <laughs> and why do you impose on others' free will if it's true that we have a free will? Uh, because, once again, go therefore make disciples of all nations. Right? What? Go, the, the, in Matthew says, go therefore make disciples of all nations, right? Um, teaching them what I have commanded you to do. So God commands us to uphold truth. God commands of us to defend the truth. And so we're all sinners. We're all, we all live in a fallen world. Because we have free will doesn't mean that what we're doing is right. It means that a lot of us are going to do what's wrong. But there's a, a few elect people that are uh, true followers of Jesus that are going to try to uh, fix them. They're going to try to correct them. So they do have free will, but what they do is a lot of times evil. Because they're not... They're not under God's umbrella. And so, and so you believe you have the free will. Because of your free will, you can impose on their free will. Absolutely. Would you be okay if they tried to impose on your free will? Yes, because they do that. Let's say that you wanted to, you get married, you want to make babies, right? Uh -huh. Do they have a right to tell you not to make a baby? They have the right to say that. And do they have a right to go and protest you and do everything they can to stop you from making a baby? If they choose to, they, they will. They have a right to do it? Yeah. They are they in the right to do that? No. But do they have a right to because of the country we live in? Yes. And so are you in the right to impose on them yes. if they want to kill the child? Yes. So be would, would they be in the right to impose on you if you want to make a child? They wouldn't be right, but they would be in the right. They would be in the right to impose on you to try to stop you from making a baby? Based off the nature of our country and the, the freedom that we have. What does that mean, based off the nature of our country? Because we have these um, axiomatic beliefs, right, which is freedom of speech, freedom of bodily autonomy, which aren't real to begin with. Um, but the fact that you can say what you want, do what you want, and um, you live in a free country, which all those things are a lie, by the way. But the, the fact that we have these things that we can typically uh, have as a standard, which is we can speak out against uh, abortion, we can speak out against uh, gay marriage, we can speak out against these things. That's How old are you? 25. You're 25. Yeah. Uh, so if you have a free will right now, uh -huh. will yourself to stop thinking? I did. You did what? I willed myself to stop thinking. Why you say that? Because I didn't think when you said that. Will yourself to have perfect peace. Okay. But, but we also live in a fallen world, right? Like Satan, like you're, you're if, tempted by Satan too. If you have a free will, will yourself to have perfect peace. But there's, there's also the part of, um, there's, there has to be discipline. There has to be needing, depending on God. So if you have a free will, will yourself to have perfect peace. But I need God for that. But you have a perfect will, why don't you use that? Well, but that doesn't mean that all the actions I take will be perfect. But why don't you, 
will yourself to have perfect peace if you have a free will? Because we're all sinners, Jesse. Well, why don't you use your will to will yourself to have perfect peace? Because I said we, don't have a, we do not have a free will at all. You don't think we have free will? I know we don't. But Did you have free me, will to say that? Tell me why don't you will yourself to have perfect peace? Because we still deal with Satan's temptations and we still need to have discipline. And so Satan can uh, override your free will? He can tempt us, yes. Can he override your free will? Uh, I would say he can intervene. Can he override your free will? Um, in terms of distractions, in terms of uh, temptations, maybe. Can he override your free will? As in, like, can he supersede completely my ability to have free will? Can Satan override your free will? Um, I would say, you know, considering the fact that we're made in God's image, but we're also sinners living in a fallen world, yes. So Satan can override your free will? At times, yes. Really? So if what, what good is a free will if evil can override your free will, Satan can override it? Yeah. Why can't you will it so that he can't override your free will? Because that would be perfection. So I, I think there has to be a delineation between free will and determinism. Um, once, if, once again, if, I like, if I'm drinking or if, I, if you look at grass and it's growing, it didn't decide to grow. It just, it just grew. It just was. If we see a tornado or an earthquake, they're both just happening. If I ask you which one is more right, the earthquake or the tornado, what would you say? I don't know. Neither one. Neither one, right? Because right. they're just effects. They're just effects of right. previous causes that they had no say in. But because of time, tell me why, can't, with your free will, why, can't, why is it that Satan is able to override your free will? Uh, because, because we still live under the umbrella of God, meaning that we still surrender to him. We still need him. We still depend on him. Meaning but that, why would you need to depend on him if you had a free will? Because, I, I don't know, I, I would say at a fundamental level, I'd have to go really deep to understand why God created the, way, the world the way it is. Meaning, why does he allow God, uh, evil to exist? Why does he allow Satan to even exist to begin with? Um, so I don't know why God did decide that, but I know that that's essentially kind of the purpose of life. Amazing. So will you go and forgive your mother? After this conversation, Jesse, I might have to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and when you say you, it's hard to do it because of your emotions and the way you feel, what do you mean by that? Uh, which part? When it's, it, yeah, it's, I forgot how you put it, so I don't want to repeat that. But when you think of having to go and face your mother oh, okay. and forgive her, how do you feel about that? What do you think about that? I would say it's hard, um, having the tough conversations, but I think it's, it's necessary. Yeah, and why is it hard to have it? Because you're used to, I think in life, I, got, yeah, I know I got used to in that, in that specific subject, um, avoiding the issue instead of facing it head on. Yeah. And I think that's why you're kind of getting at that I might have bottled up anger because of... No, you do for sure. Okay. And it's not going to change until you really see you have it and know that it's wrong to have anger because anger is evil. Mm -hmm. And you're never going to be a free person until your heart is changed. Salvation is of the heart. And that only going to change when you see you're wrong for resenting your mother and your father but especially your mother because she's turning you away from your father. When you would ask your father to help you deal with your mother when you were a kid, mm -hmm. would he help you deal with her? No. He didn't help you? No. What would he say when you asked him to help you deal with her? Well, they separated when I was eight. Oh, um, oh man. So yeah, yeah. You caught pure hell then. Yeah, yeah. And so would you see your father growing up? Uh, less and less as time went on. But yeah, I, we, we used to ride horses all the time together. He would go, take me to rodeo events. And then once we separated, then we didn't really see each other that much. And so now that you're an adult, when you went to him and asked him, why did he leave you alone with her? What did he say? Uh, well, he was unfaithful. So he would tell me that directly, that he was unfaithful. Right. Um, which I don't think you would advocate for, right? And so go ahead. <laughs> so uh, he was unfaithful and then... Um, she just had very different ways of being. She was more masculine at times, yeah. combative, the typical feminist thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you forgave your father already for uh, not protecting you from her? Yeah, yeah. You told him that? Yeah. Well, I haven't told him that either, I guess. And why not? Because uh, we just don't talk that much. But it, it doesn't need a lot of talk. Okay. Well, it doesn't need often talk. It just need you got to face him too. Okay. Because he loved you, and when he left, he left your mother, he did not leave you. 
and just that he didn't know how to deal with your mother. But don't you think some dads, maybe like him, like that they don't really care about being in a kid's life? No. Fathers love their children. It's just that they can't deal with the mother. Hmm. Okay. So let me ask, so are you, um, do you are you conservative, liberal? Yeah. You no, are conservative. conservative, yeah, yeah. A Republican? Republican, yeah. Really? I would never be mentally ill to be a liberal. Have you ever been a liberal? Uh, growing up because of my mom, yeah. Right. Yeah. And what, what, what changed that made you become a conservative? Uh, I gained a little bit of logic. I saw how mentally ill these and just absolute deranged lunatics these people are. All right. So I went, when you, you don't really, it doesn't really take much for you to see what you support and how they react in certain situations to see that maybe you're not supporting the right thing. Right. And so when you, did, did your mother know you're now conservative? Oh, yeah. What does she think about that? Uh, she doesn't know much about it. She, they don't really know politics. Oh, I got you. Yeah. So when I say I'm liberal, I mean, we had liberal tendencies, but we weren't like, like we didn't call ourselves liberals. Right. Yeah. So are you supporting the great white hope? Who's that? You know, you know who the great white hope is. Uh, Trump, I'm assuming? I rest my case. Uh, do I support him? I don't love him, but... Um, you don't love him? I, Why not? I, think I thought he, you loved all people. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's, he's been very hypocritical and, and um, uh, kind of spineless in, in some things like about abortion, for example. Um, you know, where, you know, at a, what politicians do is they don't, they don't try to tell the truth, they try to get votes. And so for him, he's had to bend the knee to get votes to kind of appeal to many people instead of being true to the, the values that he professes to follow, which is a Christian belief, and actually uphold. And why don't you love him now? No, I love him as a person, uh, but as a politician, I don't. Well, so I, I don't, I'm sure I heard his stance on abortion, but I forgot, what, where is he on, when it comes to abortion, what does he uh, say about that? Because so, I don't remember exactly what he said. So they call themselves pro-life. Right, meaning that when life begins at conception, meaning that it's valuable. Right. However, with him, I don't remember the exact time, but I know they've pushed it really far back now, where it's like a few months later, even up to like three months, six months. Sometimes you can still get an abortion, late term right. abortions. Yeah, that's that's evil in my eyes. And, and and so Trump is for that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and he's doing that because he wants to get votes. I know the last time I, again, I don't remember exactly, but I know the last time I heard him mention abortion, he said something like. He was, he was not, and, I'm, and I may be quoting him wrong because I just don't remember, but something like he, uh, he believed that if the woman's life was at risk. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah, that medical the, necessity. Yeah, the woman should have the right to live, and then the abortion is okay. But I forgot there was a second thing he said that he believed, but I forgot what it is. Okay. Do you remember him saying that at all? No, but well, that sounds right. A lot of people say that. Yeah. But you know and how what do you think about that? Uh, I, I think a lot of times they're just cop-outs. Um, so even if the woman's life was at risk, you think she should die having a baby? Let's say it's a choice between her life, a clear choice, between her life and the baby's life. Yeah. You think they should let the woman die and save the baby? I think as a true loving parent, your goal would be to save that baby at all. So you think... At all costs. You think you should let the woman die and save the baby? I think they should be willing to let the woman die in order to save the baby. Really? But if it's one of those things where there's just absolutely no chance of the baby surviving, I, I would say, um, for example, if my son was drowning in the water uh, and I knew it was an ocean where I was going to die into also, I would still jump and try to save him, even if that meant I was going to die. Mm -hmm. So I think for them, I think if you wanted to be consistent with the pro-life and being the, an abolition of abortion as well, you would have to say, I'm going to do everything in my, in my ability to save the baby first. Oh, and so if a woman's life is at risk, doing, and she's about to have this baby, uh -huh. And it was clear, not made up stuff, right? That if she has this baby, she's gonna die, but the baby will live. You say let the baby live and let her die. I would say that's a hard one. Um, Cause those kind of things happen less than uh, like 1% of the time, less than that. How do you know that? Statistics. It says that. Yeah, yeah, even the, the rape one, I mean, that one happens less than 0.7% of the time. So people bring up these big extremes that never happen. Uh, but, but you said even though with that low percentage, low percentage rate, you still would say let the woman die. I wouldn't say let the woman die because I believe the like if that was my mom or my sister, right. I would care a lot. I would want them to live, but I there would still be something within me that wouldn't feel okay just saying I'll just kill the baby as if it's nothing important. Uh, now I'm not clear. Are you saying so if the choice is between the woman and the baby and it was a clear choice, one gonna die? 
Would you say let the woman die or the baby die? I don't know if I can answer that because it's a difficult one. And because, what? because I think if I were to say let the woman live, they're going to continue doing what they already do, which is, ah, just kill the baby. Who cares? Because the woman matters anyways. Because we value that which we can see and we negate that which we can't see. Just because the baby's not outside the womb yet, they don't really put much value to it. But that doesn't make it a human being just because we can see it. And so what would you say? Uh, I would say maybe the baby. Let the baby live. Yeah. The baby has a longer future ahead anyways. And let the woman die. Yeah. I guess it would depend on the woman. Like if if she's not really doing much with her life, she's promiscuous, she's sleeping around with the whole football team, just let the baby live. But maybe she's got a brighter future, she's a good wife, she's providing good for society, then probably prioritize her. So what when you say, so who's going to know all that about the woman? The doctors, they've got to bet them well. <laughs> so are you voting for the Great White Hope, Donald Trump? Possibly. You are? Possibly, yeah. There's no other better option. Uh, I, don't, I don't think he's the Great White Hope, though. Why not? I mean, he's the only option. I think he's the only hope, but not the best hope. Why do you don't think he's the Great White Hope? Uh, because he has too many flaws in terms of, like I said, bending the knee when, when these kind of issues come up. And I think for someone to be great, they have to be fulfilled, meaning follow all of the commandments that God calls us to do, even if that means getting less votes. But, but let's say that is true, and I don't know exactly. I'm going to have to find out how the Great White Hope really stand on a boy. It doesn't matter anyway to me. You're glazing right? him right now, Jesse. But what, um, what, uh, why do you say he's not the Great White Hope? Because he's, uh, maybe to you, but to me, he's just not, he's, he's not perfect. He's, he's like any other politician that at a certain point, he, he shares some truth, but at a certain point, when the, the, the likes and the views are at risk and the votes are at risk, he bends the knee to appeal to everyone. So let me ask, do you believe he want to put America first? I don't know. There's controversy around that with him and, and uh, that one nation that, that's, you know, they have the fights together right now. So do you believe, do you believe that Donald Trump want to put America first? Um, sure, yeah. Do you believe it? No. So I'm confused. Do you believe Donald Trump want to put America first or you don't believe that? Okay, I'll, I'll put it this way. I think he does, but I think when you're a politician, you don't really have much of a choice. Like you're part of a system that you, you're, you're not the one actually making the, the decisions fully. So you do believe that Donald Trump want to put America first? I, I think in his heart he does. But, for example, like he's, I think he said recently that he's going to bring on Nikki Haley. I don't know if you are familiar with her. Or, I, I am, yeah. Yeah, so he's going to bring her onto his team. She's not an America first person. She's a sellout. And, and She's so, a bot. And so do you believe that Donald Trump want to put America first? Outside of politics, yes. Like if he wasn't a politician, maybe. But the fact that he has to play the game a certain way. He's not putting America first. And so do you believe that he wants to put America first? Yes. Really? And do you believe that if he became the president this time around, would he make America better by closing the borders, bringing jobs back, uh, and uh, protecting the citizens of America that we would be mostly more respected around the world? As a result of Donald Trump? Yeah, yeah. And do you believe that he's white? That he's white? He looks a little orange, but we'll just say he's white, yeah. And so why don't you believe he's a great white hope then? Because <laughs> that doesn't make him great. I just named all the things. <laughs> but, but, but if you tell me, like, what did I have to choose? Stopping abortion fully or closing the border? I would probably choose the abortion one. Repeat that. It, like if I had to choose between stopping the border fully, like closing it, and stopping the illegals from coming in, or Trump could completely end abortion right now, I would I would do this. But since he bends the knee, if the choice you're, you're saying that if it's the choice was over shutting down the borders or stopping abortion, you would choose stopping abortion. I would choose stopping abortion. But since he bends the knee on that and he's inconsistent with that and kind of a hypocrite with that, and he's not consistent with the the crisis message on that, just to get uh, votes, then I can't consider him great. Really? That's amazing, man. It's amazing. Let me ask you. Uh, amazing. <laughs> what, what is uh, a man? Um, someone that's uh, representative of Christ. Um, someone that is strong. Someone that has 
the immaterial aspects. So people uh, value the material, what do they have physically and financially, but the immaterial are values, integrity, morals, respect, honor. These are the things that make up a man, the immaterial aspects that we can't see. Do you believe that men should be allowed to play in women's sports? No. You don't? And why not? Because they're just superior in every aspect of life. And should women be allowed to play in men's sports? I, I, I would say they, they should have the opportunity, but they're never going to make it. So, so sh should women be allowed to play in men's sport? Yes. But men should not be allowed to play in women's sport? Correct. What's the difference? That men are superior in, in everything. Men in women's sport and women playing with men's sport, it's the same thing. Yeah, like, for example... So are you saying that when women are playing in men's sport, men are not superior? No, they're still superior. That's why I think if they allowed women to play, they would just absolutely fail at every category that they wouldn't even be able to play. So why shouldn't they be allowed to play in the women's sport if it's still the same thing? Because everything in life is based off earning your position, earning your right to do a certain thing. Women wouldn't be able to even compete. They wouldn't even get a spot on the team. That's amazing. That's amazing. What is love? God is love. What does that mean? Um, uh, love is not... Um, Love does not envy, it does not, uh, it is kindness, it is patience. Um, but what does that mean that God is love? Um, it's an action, so you show it through, uh, through the fruits, right? Through the kindness, through the patience, um, through the mercy, forgiveness. Should women be allowed to vote? No. They should not? No, they should and not. And why not? I think there should be a rule or a law that forces women to stay in the kitchen all day, at least 10 hours a day because they, they are not good uh, leaders, even though they try to be. So we are celebrated our seventh year of White History Month. You know about that? July is White History Month. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I was wondering why I was feeling a little bit happier. That's, that's why, okay. <laughs> July just feels yeah, white. It feels white so and it feels you, right. So you celebrated White History Month? Oh, yeah, yeah. now right. that you told me, yeah, I'm gonna go celebrate tonight. Right on. Yeah. Black History Month, though, I stayed inside all month. So what now? I, I stayed inside all month for Black History Month. I was depressed, I, was, I didn't feel right. Oh, you didn't? But now I do. And why not? Uh, I don't know, just because uh, it was Black History Month, and I don't know, it just didn't feel right for some reason. Should, should women be allowed to preach? No, absolutely not. Should not? No. Okay. So I got to put you on the hot seat. Okay. And I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. Let's do it. The hot seat. What is love? I asked that already, but what is love? Uh, God. Is it ever okay to call a woman fat? Yes. True or false, real men make boys first? Yes. Uh, is the earth flat or round? <laughs> round. Um, should dual citizenship be illegal in the United States of America? Nah. We say, I'm sorry? No. No. Do you love the Jews? Uh, yes, they pay my checks. Do you love the Jews? Until they stop funding those checks, yes. Do you love the Jews? As of now, yes. <laughs> Pick one. Uh, beans or fry, <laughs> uh, fish fries? <laughs> you brought that up because I'm a beaner, huh? <laughs> I'll, go with, uh, I'll go with fries. Did you take the jab? Uh, no. Is the border currently under invasion. Oh yes, absolutely. Do we need more white babies? Oh yeah, way more. They're superior. Is success, is, uh, is, uh, oh, is, a, is soccer a beta or alpha sports? Is soccer a uh, beta or alpha sports? It's a beta sport. Does a chicken have lips? No. True or false, sending your children to a public school is child abuse. Yes, true. Did you have fun? Yes, I did. Thank you for coming, man. Thank you for having me. And thanks for taking on the high school. Wait, seat. I was going to ask you a tough question, but remember you said to remind you at the end. Oh, what was the question? I forgot. You were uh, right. I was asking you, is the only sin we can commit anger? Yes. So, like adultery, would that be a sin? No. How? How does that make sense? There's only sins of the heart. But the heart, like the physical vessel? No, the spirit. The spirit? Yes. Right, but if we're made in God's image and his spirit indwells among us, how, how does that make sense? How does what make sense? That, that the only sin we can commit is anger. 
you're not going to find anywhere where sin is called anything of the heart. Salvation is of the heart. Sin is of the heart. Salvation is of the heart. That's why in order to return to the Father, you must overcome the evil of the heart, okay. which is of the Father and the devil, and everything else will fall away. So, but the heart must uh, be born again of the heart. Okay, well, last question real quick. Can you at least agree with me that one that sins once is a sinner? No. One that sins once is only a sinner until they change from the heart. And that would be through repentance, right? And repentance is forgiveness. And many of you are wrong for being angry, for playing God. Jesse, I think you and me need to have a serious talk after this. Amazing. Amazing. Tell the folks how to get your website or whatever information you want to put out there. Uh, is it that camera? Yes. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, you can just follow me on Instagram, Elie official Eliezer Perez, and then YouTube, official Eliezer Perez. I'll be doing more street debates uh, after this interview, too. So if you guys want to go watch, you can go, go there. Thank oh. you so much for, for having me, though. Yeah, thank you for coming. Got a lot of respect for you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And thank you all for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Don't forget to uh, support us by going to thefallestate.tv and then the link the description is there uh, to locals.com. Like, follow, ring the bell. Like over here, follow here, ring the bell here, and uh, subscribe there. <laughs> And I do appreciate it. And uh, let me hear from you if you have other suggestions for the show, people you'd like to see on the fatherstate.tv. Let the producer know. For, uh, producer at the fatherstate.tv, all right? And, and again, thank you all for tuning in. Check out the merch. We got merch. Check it out, all right? Take care and thank you again for tuning in. Thank you for coming, man. Thank you. Remember, if it's not white, it ain't right. It ain't right. Yep. Thank you. All right, amazing.